Hello folks, this is Solo once again. Welcome to another video for Teamfight Tactics. Sorry that the loading screen didn't pop up here for some reason. It only started recording on the game itself. So in this game, we're going to be looking at the legendary champion that kind of has disappeared from Teamfight Tactics, uh, that being Kale. She is in fact still in the game. A lot of people thought that she would get removed in set 5.5. I thought that she was one of the highest candidates to be a champion that would get knocked out of the pool but she was not removed she's still in the game but she's pretty much an, an afterthought she's not really played in hardly any team compositions but there are some reasons to play her in set 5.5 uh, in part that's due to how strong knights are overall knights seem to be a pretty strong basis for a lot of team compositions you'll see a number of people playing them she synergizes well and you can play her with six knights potentially but I think the stronger version usually is to play her with four knights and then be able to stack in more mystic and more ironclad. So this is a game where I was um, looking to play towards that direction. Anti-Social Monkey on our Discord had played a couple of games with Kale, and I just wanted to test that out myself to see how it would go. And I'm going to be looking to play in that direction. And, uh, well, you can imagine I'm going to hit to at least some degree because... Otherwise, I wouldn't be showing this game. Uh, one of the big issues with Kale is being a legendary unit, she, you have to hit her, and it's very possible anytime you go for a team composition based around a five-cost unit that you just might not find that five-cost unit. That is always very possible to do, and it means you really can't roll too much until you get to level eight. You kind of have to go fast eight and then roll at eight and hope that you hit. One thing that I think does work reasonably well is you can look to play kind of a knight-based opening, and then you can go into, you know, whatever you hit, whether that is hitting, uh, like, say, Lucian and playing Cannoneers, Lucian plus Action, you can play. You can, If you hit Aphelios, you can also play Aphelios and then toss in Action if you hit Action. Or, of course, if you find the Kale, you can play the Kale. And Kale's probably the hardest unit to hit in that setup. Here, I was, again, I was looking to play Knights as an opening, but uh, I really didn't find any Knights whatsoever. So kind of have these Brawlers in, and I was trying to figure out, like, what the heck am I going to do here? But uh, then I kind of see that there's some other options. So I'm going to look to toss in the uh, the Kennen and toss in the Tristana. And I was like, you know what? Triss can probably hold items for a future AD carry of some kind. One of the nice things is there is some shared itemization between champions like Lucian and Aphelios and Action and uh, eventually Kale. Now they don't have the exact same items. Some items are better than others for some of those champions, but there is some overlap in their itemization. So you can to some degree play, uh, like start building in that direction with your items and then kind of play what you end up hitting. But for this game, I specifically wanted to test out whether Kale would be at all viable. So that's kind of the direction that I'm heading in here. Now, as far as Kale's items, she kind of, she has very specific itemization and she's one of those champions who can feel super oppressive if you hit her items and then super useless if you don't hit her items. So what are kind of her core items? Well, Kale is a champion who scales with time over the course of a battle. That's kind of her big thing is she gets stronger as time goes on in the battle. You see me going to switch around some of these champions here. I'm going to drop the Nunu and drop the Gragas and then play the Poppy and then play the uh, Nautilus in there. And then I'm also going to look to combine together the sword and the chain vest to make a guardian angel because that is in fact one of kale's key items so the point i was trying to get into is kale is a champion who scales with time she has different ascensions those ascensions happen based on time in the fight not based on how many attacks she gets off or anything like that and the well i'll talk more about that later on in the game when we actually have a kale to look at but uh basically she ascends throughout the fight the longer the fight goes on the stronger she gets and if she has the right item, she can be really oppressive. As Thresh <laughs> crabs Trist out of a rocket jump, which is really sad. Uh, so Kale can feel super oppressive if you have the right setup for her. But if you don't have the right setup, then she just is kind of useless. And in most team comps, she's pretty useless, which is why she doesn't get played very often. She is not a unit that can be splashed into a team comp. She needs a very dedicated team specifically set up to play around her strengths. And that largely involves stalling out the fights as long as possible. So one of the items that does that is the Guardian Angel. Because when someone gets killed in Guardian Angel, they're going to revive. And that's going to buy more time. So not only does it um, you know, give her a chance to die and come back to life again, but it also stalls for time. 
So, you know, it takes like three seconds for that revive animation to play, and that's time where Kale is still scaling. I don't particularly like this design. I don't think it's great for the health of the game to have a champion, which is kind of super binary in the way that Kale can be. In the sense of if you hit Kale and can get her to stall out the fights, then she just eventually becomes unkillable and she like auto wins. But uh, otherwise, you know, like if she doesn't have the right setup, she's just useless. Uh, I just think it's not great for the health of a game to have units that are that binary in nature. But anyway, so Guardian Angel is a good item. I put it on her. It also happens to be a pretty good item for Trist because Trist loves to throw herself into very dangerous places on the map. So it's not a bad item on Trist either. And Trist turns out to be a decent item holder for a late game carry like Kale. I don't think she's the best late game care. I don't think she's the best item holder for Kale. I actually think that Varus is a better item holder because then you can play through Redeem trait, which I don't really have an option of doing. I am instead playing through the Hellion trait, which is, you know, decent because I can play uh, Poppy, who's a knight, and then I can pair that with Trist, who is also a Hellion, get a little bit of the extra attack speed. Is here, Trist just hilariously running around the map, jumping around. Uh, but she can't kill a Leona with the redeemed uh, bonuses to armor and MR. And also with that Wormogs on her, so no, not, not going to be able to kill that unit. Unfortunately, I still have last pick on the carousel. I've lost two out of three rounds, and I still have last pick on the carousel. It's just like, what the heck here? All right, now what items am I looking for? So there's a couple different ones I'd love to get. I wouldn't mind getting the tier, because tier would allow me to make Hand of Justice, which is very good. It's another one of the key items on Kale. Hand of Justice means that she can heal off some of her spell damage, which is really good. Unfortunately, that gets taken. And the other thing I was looking to take would be a bow. I have a rod sitting on my bench. Rod plus bow would mean the uh, Rage Blade, and that is another one of Kale's items. So her core items are generally... Guardian Angel, Hand of Justice, Rage Blade. Those are like the three key items you want to make on her. None of them are available, so I go ahead and grab the Giant Spell, and that's just for a frontline tank of some kind. Now, I actually like the fact, one of the things that does help Kale in this uh, here in set 5.5 is there's a lot of super tanky uh, items that come out of the Radiant Armory. You have a lot of stuff that's like, uh, I don't know, Radiant Gargoyle Stone Plate, which is like, not only does it give this huge armor and magic resistance, but you, the unit also heals for like 2% of max health every single second of the fight. So you have a couple different items that like allow you to make super duper tanky units. Uh, I think I had a video earlier. I haven't done a lot of videos for set 5.5, but I think I had one earlier where like I had a Galio with like the super tank setup and that, you know, was just like totally unkillable. So totally unkillable uh, front lines, you know what they synergize well with? They synergize well with Kale because the whole point of getting a super tanky front line is they stall out the fight, Kale ascends, and then she kills everything. So I picked up the Giant's Belt because I'd like to make a Wormogs if at all possible. I, what I'm kind of hoping for is, you know, get a Wormogs item, get a Wormogs for a frontliner. It can go on Poppy for right now. Later on, probably Galio or potentially Garen, or it could be Rel because I want to play Rel on this team comp. But make the Wormogs, then get a super tank item from the Radiant Armory. And then all I need to do is turn up a tier at some point for Hand of Justice and then a bow at some point to in order to get uh, the Rage Blade. The tier could be a little bit tricky because tiers tend to be in high demand. Bows generally have fairly low priority in the metagame right now. So not to say that they're the easiest item to get, but they tend not to be the hardest item to get. So I'm reasonably confident that I can get at least the bow, and then hopefully I can find a tier at some point as well. Anyway, I am up against the team comp that hasn't lost yet, and I was just hoping I could kill something on this team comp because this team comp is like all two-star units. I just didn't want to take 10 damage here, but guess what? I don't kill anything and I take 10 damage. I was like, ah, that was very disappointing. So uh, it hasn't been a great stage two thus far. Even though I, what is it? Uh, I, even though I was, <laughs> like the, the fights didn't line up the way I wanted. I had last pick on the carousel. I didn't get any kind of a streak going. Win, loss, loss, win, loss. And then I still took 10 damage in a fight at the end. So it's like, I wasn't able to get a win streak going. I wasn't able to get a loss streak going. I wasn't able to get early carousel priority off of a loss streak. And on top of that, I still took 16 damage because I took 10 damage in the final round. So like overall, it just wasn't an especially great stage two. Not really anything that I was looking for there. Well, I do get something good here. I managed to get a giant spell and that's really nice because I'll use that to make the Wormogs. In terms of what I'm playing right now, I don't really have a lot of traits in. Three Hellions, two Knights is nothing much, not, nothing special here. I do get a ton of gold here and then a double Rakan drop. So I was like, all right, I'll just drop these, both of these, uh, to get up to 40 gold. And that is quite nice. I, I was pretty lucky there. I actually get accelerated in my build by quite a bit by um, being able to find... 
what was it? I got a big gold drop and then got six more golden champions. That was probably like 13 or 14 gold there. Like that's a huge deal in terms of accelerating economy. So now here on stage three, one, I'm on what, 48 gold. And if I win this round, I can like sell the poppy and get to 50. Um, so yeah, that's, that, that's pretty good there. Although I think I would end up holding the poppy just because I might have to sell the current poppy and replace her if I want to run six knights, which I would definitely do if I could find like a knight emblem. So yeah, economy really, really good as a result of uh, those drops there. So uh, getting the giant's belt was great because it gets me the war mugs. You want war mugs because so many of the super tank radiant items give you percentage of max health heal every second. So what makes them more effective? Getting war mugs. War mugs has gone up in priority enormity, enormously. Enormity is not... I guess it is a word, but not not used in this context. Uh, it has gone up in priority enormously in set 5.5, just due to how those radiant items work. It makes Wormogs uh, a much more desirable item. So yeah, I do win the fight. I probably should sell the Poppy to get to 50 gold, but I did want the option to uh, keep Poppy in there if I was going to uh, find like a Knight Emblem. So here I've, I toss in Leona. I actually been playing two um, cannons up to that point in time for lack of better units. And here I'm just looking to find one more Knight that's why I'm rolling here. I was like, can I find another knight or something? Because I'd love to get up to four knights here. Or or four hellions. Four knights or four hellions. But uh, instead I find the misfortune and then I'm going to take out one of the cannons for that. So that gets me up to two cannoneers. And I'm going to hold on to that here. So uh, I picked up the Varus. That was because I had the option to try. And uh, if I like found a bunch of Varuses, maybe I could swap and have Varus be the item holder. But uh, as soon as I was able to uh, find the Misfortune for Cannoneer, I was like, all right, I'll just play through, through um, Trist and into Cannoneer for this game while I'm trying to econ up to like level 7 and level 8. And at that point, I don't think I have to search for Varuses any longer. So this is still not really the board I want. I really would prefer to be playing four knights right now. It would make my front line so much tankier. Like, I don't really need the cannon in this comp, Poppy, plus uh, Trist is fine. So I'm actually going to sell the cannon, because I really, like I said, I'm not looking to play Hellions here. I want one more knight, but Thresh just will not show up. Thresh is the missing unit. That's the knight I haven't found yet. I found five Poppies, three Leonas, two Nautiluses, but zero Threshes. So there you go. I could also, of course, find Galio or well, actually, I can't find Garen yet because he's a legendary unit. But um, I'd really like to play four knights. Four knights, two Hellion, two Cannoneer is kind of what I want to be running right now. Still, I'm in pretty good shape. I'm solid on health. This team comp looks pretty decent. Again, if I can find a tier or a bow, I'd be in good shape. The bow in particular would spike my damage by quite a bit because uh, Triss really needs the extra attack speed. So just looking for certain items and, uh, you know, feeling reasonably good. Two-star Trist would also help a lot. I'm still playing through the one-star Trist. But I didn't want to roll too much more gold. Remember, I can't roll down my economy too far because I'm trying to find Kale, legendary unit. I really need to be level 8 to find her. The odds of finding her at level 7 are basically non-existent. Have to get really lucky for that to happen. So really need to get to 8 to have any realistic chance of finding her. And... Uh, that means I can't roll too much here on uh, level 6. I had fortunately I had enough gold that I could roll at least a little bit, as Yasuo's true damage is killing my team here. <laughs> um, I had enough to be able to roll a decent amount and still have solid economy, but I couldn't really roll more than that. Not if I want to get to fast level 8. So uh, here I'm looking to pick off Carousel. I have second priority. Uh, I feel like my comp is not that strong, but I've still been picking very late on the carousel. Right now, I'd really like that bow because that would get me Rage Blade. Of course, that gets taken. Then there's a tier, and I really like that tier. So I was like, ooh, can I get the tier? And indeed, I can. So I will prioritize that. Could also grab that Triss for Triss 2 star, but I'm pretty sure I can find another Tristana. I would much rather emphasize the tier. So that's going to get me Hand of Justice, and now I really just need a bow if I want to get Kale's kind of best in slot itemization there. And hey, look, I find 2 star Trist anyways. So this is a pretty big damage spike. Again, I would have preferred the bow. That would have been better. But because um, Rageblade would do more to spike my damage right now than Hand of Justice. Trist uses Hand of Justice okay, but it's like not a great item on her. It's definitely not one of her recommended. It's not definitely not one of her best in slot items. Trist, I think, wants like Bloodthirster and Last Whisper. And I think Infinity Edge is pretty decent on her. Rageblade is pretty good on her too because she needs the attack speed. Unless you're running a lot of Hellions, she needs that. But uh, Hand of Justice is solid. It's a good item. One of the nice things about Hand of Justice is after it got nerfed at the start of set 5 because it was like the item for most of set 4. But it's been steadily getting little buffs here and there. And now it's back to being a pretty good item. And one of the great things about it is it's very versatile. You can use it on a lot of champs. And it can be pretty effective. It's a very good item on uh, Lucian as well. 
I think I mentioned that in the last video I put up for Team Fight Tactics. So it's a good item. It's a nice, versatile item. And right now I'm hoping Trist will stay away from the Abomination and keep shooting. And it looks like we're going to take this. It's a bit of a shame that I lost uh, stage 3-3. Three, three. Otherwise, I'd be on a long winning streak. All right, so here is the most important round of the game. 3-6, the Radiant Armory. And what item am I going to get? And, oh, that's a bit disappointing. I really wanted a super tank item because all I needed was a bow to get Rage Blade. But there is the Radiant Rage Blade here. And I was like, I guess I take that. The, the Radiant uh, Less Whisper is really good as an item. But the problem is it's not great on Kale. And there's a solid argument to be made here. Just say, hey, you know what? Just pivot out of Kale. Just look to play Lucian. You've got, you could have the Radiant, um, like I could have the Radiant uh, Less Whisper plus the Hand of Justice. And then I could just look for a third item on Lucian. Like, I don't know, Death Blade or... Uh, Infinity Edge or something for his last slot. But uh, I was committed to testing out Kale. That's what I was trying to use this game to do. This is a normal game. It's not like there's a ton on the line here. So I go with the Rage Blade. And again, Rage Blade is a good item. I've kind of got the best in slot Kale items. The problem is the Radiant Rage Blade is generally seen as being one of the weakest items. It's just not that great. It really is not significantly better than the normal Rage Blade. I mean, it is. It, 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 the normal Rage Blade, I think, is 6% 6 attack speed per attack, and the Radiant is 10% attack speed per attack but like the difference is just not that big whereas the radiant hand of justice is like amazing and radiant less whisper is also really good but just not quite that good for kale if that makes sense so anyway that's why i opt uh to go for that and by the way i should be picking up these luxes as well because lux is a key unit to play in the kale comp i really should be picking up luxes uh not the lulus should be picking up luxes instead but uh, anyway, like I said, I haven't run this comp a lot, and this was a game to test that out. So uh, I still have not found a Thresh yet, which is <laughs> kind of amusing. Still hoping I will find that. Uh, I don't want to roll a lot of gold here. Uh, I'm still holding on to the... Uh, what is it? I'm still holding on to the uh, Lulus because I'm thinking if I can't find Thresh or Galio or Garen for four knights, then I'll just play four Hellions, even though that's not what I want. So go ahead and go to level seven here. Standard timing to go to level seven. And I'll toss in the Lulu, and there you go. There's our, our four Hellions. So uh, you typically don't play four Hellions if your goal is to go into Kale later on. But that's what I had here, so that's kind of what I was going with. So at least, I, at least I'm in pretty good shape. I've got two-star Trist. I've got a two-star, what is it? All my Knights are two-star, and Trist is two-star. So most of my board's two-star. I even have two out of three Lucians already, which is pretty crazy. The, I mean, again, if I was really do, trying to play like best in slot here, I probably should just go into Lucian and play a standard Lucian comp, but I wanted to test out the whole Kale uh, setup here. And so now, again, I didn't roll a lot on seven, need to get to eight. So I have to survive here on stage seven, or stage four, excuse me. That's the goal, survive on stage stage four so I can get up to level eight, probably at the end of this stage, and then just cross our fingers, hope that we hit Kale. It's a bit of a risky setup, but that's our goal there. All right, so Trist is gonna die. She does have the Guardian Angel to bring her back though. And she does have a lot of attack speed stacked up. So unfortunately she doesn't quite kill that uh, that uh, Rel over on the other side. She pops out from the Hellion portal and wow, that fight was pretty close. It's very unfortunate I lost it because that, that person I was up against hadn't lost a single round yet. And by the way, here's the bow. So again, really, really, really wish that there had been a Radiant Tank item in that armory. It, it really sucks that there was no Radiant Tank armory. Uh, radiant Tank item in that armory. Again, if there had been, uh, like I said, and I'll just use this to make Rage Blade on Lucian because someone can make use of that item, I guess. I don't know what else I'm going to do with a bow. And I really had no use for a Jeweled Gauntlet, which is the other option I could have made there. Um, but like, and I want to get used to this item, but like to get back to that previous point, if there had been a Radiant Gargoyle Stoneplate or a Radiant Ionic Spark or a Radiant version of Sunfire Cape, like all of those items would have just been fantastic and they would do so much to stall out other teams to buy time for Kale, but none of them are options. It's all attack items. And then in, in addition, to that, I think there was the Radiant Zephyr, which is also a decent item. And uh, maybe I should have taken the Radiant Zephyr, which is a nice utility item overall, uh, just on the hopes that I could have found a bow. But I went with the item that fit the last slot. I don't think it was a terrible decision. Still, I just really wish that there had been one of the items I was actually looking for there. And this is something that I just find very frustrating about set 5.5. So much of the gameplay is dependent on what... Rate wow, Trist. Ni nice rocket jump there, Trist. Right into the middle of the enemy team to get slaughtered. Um... It's one of the things that just really frustrates me about this set. I hate the fact that the Radiant items are so core 
to how the game plays out, and you, it's just RNG which ones are there. I mean, yes, you can all you can find creative uses for them. You can almost always find something. No, the Rage Blade is not bad for my comp. Obviously, it works. It's a it's a fitting item, but it's like, man, my comp would be so much stronger if just a different item had showed up there, and there's nothing you can do to control it. It is entirely out of your hands. Uh, sometimes you just get an item that's perfect for your comp, and sometimes you don't, and it's incredibly frustrating that you have no control over that whatsoever. So um, I don't know if I necessarily like them more or less than the shadow items, but I will say for the shadow items, they were definitely too confusing for general use. But at least you had a little bit more control. By the way, as Triss gets grabbed out of thin air yet again by Thrash. What an unlucky hook that was. Uh, at least you had a bit more control. So I just, I really don't like the here is a box and stuff pops out of it and do your best to make use of what pops out. There's no player agency. There's no planning ahead of time. It's just reacting to stuff that happens to you as Trist once again commits suicide, jumping right into the middle of the enemy team. So like I said, I expected to lose rounds here. It's not surprising to me that I have been losing these last few rounds. But um, it is a problem for my comp because I have gotten out. Like, like I said, I didn't really roll. I didn't roll on stage. Um, I didn't roll here on level seven at the start of stage four. And you can really see the result of that. Most of the people in this game, I know it's a normal game, but most of the people in this lobby are in diamond. I think we had four diamond, two platinum, and a gold player in this game. The other people, just when I looked them up afterwards. So anyway, we have a carousel, and obviously I'm going to take Gwen here. I don't really need much more uh, in terms of itemization for a carry. And uh, there weren't a lot of tank items on that carousel either. In fact, I think the only tank item that was there was the chain vest. But uh, it, an option to just play Gwen is fantastic. So uh, that is really, really good. I will, of course, play Gwen. Uh, I will happily drop down to just three Hellions to play Gwen, and she will give me another Mystic unit, and she's also going to provide the Mist, which will uh, produce damage for anyone who stands in it. And like I said, it's not like I really need to run four Hellions. Four Hellions is not even what I want to run. I just still haven't found a Thresh or a Galio the entire game yet, so that's kind of what I'm going with here. Uh, as far as what Gwen's trait does, I know she's still new. We're still relatively relatively near the beginning of set 5.5. I'll just read her trait. This is the inanimate trait. At the start of combat, inanimate champions summoning harrowing mist in all adjacent hexes that surround them for 8 seconds, granting all allies within 33% damage reduction while they remain within the mist. So basically, if you stand within the any champ that stands in Gwen's mist... Uh, gets 33% damage reduction. So, hey, guess who likes to just stand in place? Yeah, that's right. It's Kale. So, Kale can just stand in place, get that Mist benefit. And Gwen, of course, is a great unit in her own right. She brings Mystic to the table, so you can get more Mystic into the game. And she also is a pretty good damage dealer and armor shredder in her own right. Uh, I believe she shreds armor and magic resist, uh, as we find another Lulu here. And I am going to go ahead and, again, still be patient. I actually did win that round. I hit one of the weaker comps in that last round. So 47 health is not great, but it's actually kind of good for me if I lose this round and trigger the, uh, whatever it's called, the item that drops when you get under uh, 40 HP. You get, the, you get the little box that drops with extra stuff in it. So it would actually be kind of good to lose this round and go down to, like, 38-ish AP, something like that, 35 to 40 hit points, get that box, and then then I'll have more gold to roll on hitting level 8. So, like, I never really want to lose rounds, but I don't think it's the worst thing necessarily here. So, anyway, I'm up against a Hellion Cop. This is a Hellion Cop that has a Cannoneer spat on a 3-star Ziggs. So, Trist is going to jump into the back lines, but, uh, yeah, she dies there, and then she dies instantly afterwards, and when Trist dies... It's not good for my comp, because she's all my damage. So I take 14 damage, and that was a bad loss. Uh, as I said, strategically, not the worst place to take a loss, but I would have preferred to kill maybe a few more units in that comp. I don't know if we killed any... Actually, I actually don't think we killed anything, because that person's at level 6, and they're just rolling and rolling and rolling for uh, more Hellion units. All right, so what do we get? We get a Nico's help, and we get a Chain Vest. And that's pretty interesting, because I can surely use that Chain Vest... Um, I have nothing else I can make a Bramble Vest. I also could potentially look to make a... What's the other item? Um, I could make a uh, Locket, although Locket does not synergize great with how you have to stand to take full advantage of Gwen's Mist. But I can make use of that, and of course Nico's help is great. If I can find another Gwen, it's two-star Gwen. If I can find two Kales, it's two-star Kale. In a worst-case scenario, I could look to play Lucian, and then I get a... Uh, what is it? I get a... Um, uh, a Brawler's Club. All right, so I'm going to roll here. I do finally find Galio, so that'll get four knights in, finally. And then I also find two-star Lucian. And I find Garen, which is great. There's another knight I can play. And now I'm rolling, and I'm finding all these Lucians. I was like, oh, man, why couldn't I find these in a Lucian game? But, like, I'll keep rolling here. 
I find a Hymer, which is kind of interesting, and aha, there we go, I found Kale. So now I need to start swapping my team around. I need to get the Kale in, and then I need to get Rel in, because she will make Redeem Trait. In the meantime, though, I run out of time here on the staging screen, so I'm going to have to look to do that in the next round. So I need to get Rel in. Rel will make Ironclad and Redeemed, which is really important. So we'll look to make that. And uh, we still have Lucian in. Lucian can come out of the comp. I don't need him now because I no longer have Cannoneer in and I'm not looking to go into Sentinel. So Kale is going to be doing her best to ascend over there, but my front line is not quite strong enough. I really need my front line to hang in there a little bit longer. Actually, they are hanging in there, but can we now kill this Aphelios, who also has the Rage Blade over there? It's a good thing I have the Guardian Angel, so Kale will come back, but no, she can't win the duel with the two star Aphelios, unfortunately. Very close but she was not quite able to win that. But then, aha, okay, I'm high rolling now. I just find another Kale and instantly toss in the Kale. And now I just have to reconfigure my team comp. So, all right, what's going to go in? Well, we will replace the Poppy with the Garen. Obviously, Garen is much better. So I will go ahead and I'm going to look to itemize the uh, the Rel because she gets the uh, redeemed bonuses. And I will look to put this on her, uh, put this on the Gwen. And now I'm going to try to reposition to take advantage of the Mist a little bit better. And let's try to do that there. And then I still have to decide what items I can make here. What is it? I have my choice between uh, Jeweled Gauntlet and what do I do? I end up making the Bramble Vest and then the, uh, what is it? The Jeweled Gauntlet, which I think is pretty good. I also had the option to make, a, what was it? Locket plus Shroud. Shroud would be good, but I didn't think Locket would be too useful here. The Jeweled Gauntlet's actually pretty good on Gwen. It's one of her better items. And then the uh, Bramble Vest will actually make her a lot tankier. By the way, look at Kale just stood in the... Uh, in the ult that was coming down from Velkaz, that Velkaz has like no damage on its abilities. It's just all mana generation. And then, uh, a, what is it, a gunblade. So that, that's actually not that well put together comp. And now I'm just going to look to go to level 9, because at level 9 I can look to put in another Mystic unit or something else. All right, let me read you the description of how Kale's abilities works while I've got a minute here. I'm just going to read her description. Kale's whole thing is that she, she doesn't use mana, she ascends throughout the fight. Kale ascends every few seconds. Each bonus stacks with the one below until she's fully ascended. First ascension, Kale, Kale's attacks deal percent of her attack damage as bonus true damage. That happens after... These are every five seconds her ascensions go up. So first of all, attacks deal percent of her attack damage as true damage. Second, attacks explode around the target, dealing her attack damage and, and bonus true damage to nearby enemies. So first she does percentage of her damage as true damage. Then she hits uh, areas around her target. Third, every 15th attack grates Kale immunity to damage for one second, so she starts getting invincibility. And then fourth and final ascension, attacks cause swords to rain down around the target, dealing magic damage. And it's the fourth ascension that's really good, because then she can start healing off the magic damage that she's doing. And that's why the Hand of Justice is so good on her. It allows her to start healing off of all of those uh, damages. Okay, so now I've got another carousel, and there's a lot of stuff that's good here. There's a Garen here that would be great. There's a Redeem Spat. That would be great too, but what I really, really, really want here is that Mystic Emblem. That would allow me to get three Mystic in, and then at level nine, I could toss in another unit for four Mystic. I just want that so bad, but unfortunately, it's on the other side of the carousel, and I can't get it, and I was like, ah, why does it have to be on the other side of the carousel? Why, why, why? Why couldn't one more person have been dead? If that person on 8 HP were dead, I would have gone earlier. Um, oh, no, actually, it wouldn't have mattered. I still would have gone in the same place on the carousel. So, unfortunately, it goes to that player under light, which is really sad. So, I come up with the best in the situation that I can, which is to grab a redeemed emblem, which I'll toss on Garen to make him tankier. So, because I found a redeemed emblem, I actually do have an option to play uh, 6 redeemed right now, which you would normally not do in a Kale comp. Uh, at least not the way the game's played right now. You typically would not go into six redeemed. But because of this, now if I pick up Lux, that will get me a redeemed unit. And then I can toss in Syndra as my last unit at level nine. And that gets me up to six redeemed. So I was like, all right, I'll look to do that. Alternately, I could play more Mystic units. And I think it would have been better if I just could have gotten that Mystic Emblem. I was like, ah, why did that other player have to want that Mystic Emblem? Four Mystic would be so awesome. And I think I actually, you know, if I if I played Lux, I even have the option to go up to five Mystic with that Mystic Emblem, which would be like, what, 300 MR or something crazy like that. But not an option, unfortunately. Spawned on the other side of the carousel, just dumb luck, couldn't get it. So Kale's going to get popped here, and it's like, all right, well, this fight's over, right? Well, Kale, once she starts ascending, she is a difficult unit to kill. And that is why Kale wins late game fights. It's super frustrating to see that, but if she's properly itemized... She just kind of auto wins at the end of the fights, which again, as I, I've said, I don't think is particularly good game design. I don't really like the whole Kale auto wins fights if you hit a certain point. Uh, yeah, Mystic 5 would be 250 MR for the whole team, plus four knights. 
which uh, apparently applies to everybody. Knights is flat damage reduction. Um, I did not realize that that actually applies to everyone on your team. It's not just the uh, it's not just the knights themselves. It's everyone on the team. Um, and that's calculated after resistances. So if you have like 250 MR and you also have ironclad, uh, which is not a lot of armor, I think it's 40 armor, but like, you know, 200 MR, 40 armor and 40 flat damage reduced, uh, like just it, subtracted out on every attack. It's pretty hard to kill your units. Oh, by the way, also Kale gets the redeemed bonuses too. Um, now I can't run six redeemed and all those mystic units. So there'd have to be a trade off there, but oh well. That's fine. So anyway, I'm up against this player, Underlake. This is the person who took the Mystic um, Emblem. Again, I'm still annoyed at this player. I really wish that that had not happened. But I'm winning against this cop pretty easily. So I'm not that concerned or anything like that. And they're down to 15 HP. So uh, in pretty good shape. They had, uh, they're had they playing a Karma Comp. And I think they had like five Karmas there. Uh, they had three Karmas. They had a two-star Karma. And then they had two extra Karmas on the bench. And they're basically out of gold. I don't know if you saw that, but that person had like 20 gold. So basically out of gold to roll for much more. Here, I'm going to find the Gargoyle Stoneplate. And that's nice. That's a good item. Uh, it'll go well on Rel and just make her that much tankier. I don't know if you've noticed this, but Rel is surviving to the end of most of these fights, even though she's just a one-star unit. If I can two-star her, toss that Gargoyle Stoneplate on, plus the Wormogs, plus all the, re the uh, resistances coming from Redeemed, and uh, Ironclad and Mystic, and she's really, really tanky. All right, so now I need to get up to level nine, and I also, and there's a Syndra there as well, so I can play Syndra to, I can play Syndra and Lux. I get three Mystic if I play Lux, but I'm at five Redeemed right now, so uh, what I think I wanna do is replace the Lulu with the Syndra to get up to six Redeemed. I should probably hold the Lulu in case I want more, um, in case I want more uh, Mystics in later on, but uh, I think that I ultimately end up selling the Lulu in part because that allowed me to get Rel 2 Star and I think I click on the Rel 2 Star. Yeah, so I end up selling the Lulu. So I I'm still only at two Mystic. I was at two Mystic before, but now I've got six Redeemed in and that feels like it's worthwhile to, um, I think it's more, more worthwhile to play six Redeemed than three Mystic here because that's going to apply, oh, my redeemed units are just going to be so hard to kill. Like the Garen with the redeemed I icon is going to be really, really hard to kill. The Rel is going to be super hard to kill. And so like, even though this team has a three-star Nidalee and it has a three-star um, Riven as well, and like, that's really strong. Rel is just tanking up there and not dying. And whoop, there's Kale once she gets turned on. Kale's like, I don't care if you have three-star Riven and three-star Nidalee. Uh, the front line holds and the fight gets stressed out and Kale ascends. And that's that. Fight just ends just like that. So uh, at this point, I've been winning all these rounds, and I was like, all right, well, that's great. Now we hit two-star Lux, and we have two-star Gwen, and I'm rolling, and I was like, oh, okay, two-star Galio and two-star Gwen. Yes, yes, please. I will indeed lock for that. So I'm feeling really, really good about the game right now, and it just doesn't look like any of these comps are going to be able to beat me. And then I'm, like, scrolling through, and I was like, wait a minute, what? Wait, what? Did did I see that right? Did, did that player underlay have a three-star Karma? I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's that's not right. That that person just had just had um uh, just had five karmas and had no gold to roll. How in the world could they possibly get up to nine? But anyway, we'll deal with that in a minute. We still have this uh, this other redeemed comp that is working through Velkaz. But again, the problem is the Velkaz has no damage. Uh, double Shojin means it casts a lot. But double Shojin and a Gunblade, you need some kind of ability power on that unit. And in fact, this is the player who win streaked through like the first like 12 rounds of the game. Basic skills, like they didn't lose a round until stage four. But uh, it's just a fatal flaw in how that Vel'Koz was built, unfortunately. So that person's going to get knocked down to four HP. And I'm able to two-star Gwen, I'm able to two-star Galio. And the only unit that's not two-starred right now is the Garen. So that's pretty awesome. But... Yeah, that team, Underlight, the person who stole my Mystic Emblem on that carousel, looking pretty strong. And then, this is super annoying here, the uh, player I just beat, Basic Skills, is going to quit the lobby before this next round takes place. And so, I'm going to hit Underlight here. I was like, wait a minute, the three-star Karma, what, how did this person get three-star Karma? How did they have the gold? They didn't even roll their gold. How did they find a three-star Karma? They must have had some unbelievable shop. But anyway, I'm up against this comp, and it's not even a go. It's actually a ghost round. Like, even if I win this round, I won't deal any damage to this player. I was like, what? Because that person quit the lobby, now the matchmaking did not update in response. So I was like, all right, I, I guess we got to try to win this round against this team. So there goes Kale, and I was like, am I actually going to beat three-star Karma, who has legitimately good itemization? And I was like, yes, I do actually win. 
but it's a ghost round and I do no damage. It's like, oh my god, are you kidding me? Ghost round, no damage. Oh, and what pops up on this carousel? Uh, is that a Dawnbringer emblem? Yes, it is. And I, I can't get it. There's no way I can get it. The other player just, it's on their side of the carousel. I have no chance to get that item. So I just grabbed the trap ball. I should have probably run the, to try and grab the Dawnbringer emblem because that actually takes them from five Dawnbringer to six Dawnbringer, which is a big power spike to go from five Dawnbringer to six Dawnbringer. But what could I do? It was on the other side of the carousel. I had no chance to get it. I guess I should have tried regardless, just on the off chance that they were asleep at the wheel and not paying attention. But it's like, how lucky can this person be? They got the Mystic emblem. They've got the uh, Dawnbringer emblem. I was like, Ah, this is so frustrating. And they hit three-star Karma. What? This is not fair. And they hit two-star Volibear and two-star Ivern. I was like, oh, come on. They're not even level nine. They're level eight and they hit two-star Voli there. I'm like, come on. How is this person getting everything? They're hitting everything. Ah, so it's super duper frustrating. Anyway, I just feel like I've built a really good comp here. But uh, I'm not sure that it's going to be enough because, I mean, that's a three-star Karma. And the Karma has very good itemization. Shojin, and then the the uh, Radiant Infinity Edge and the Radiant uh, Jeweled Gauntlet. And I was like, I I don't think there's anything I can do about this. I don't think I can beat this comp because they, as I said, have, have hit everything. So uh, I can hit two-star Garen, but... And I just don't think I can make my team stronger. I mean, the way that I... What I would need to do to beat this comp is I would need to... Uh, drop down from six redeemed, get up to four mystic, and uh, maybe that would be enough to do it. But I just don't have the money to change my team comp. And it's like, would selling these units really make me stronger? And probably not. But I have to. I, I just don't have the money to change my comp into something else. Everything's two starred. I've got you know I've got two star Galio, two star Gwen, and two star Kale with really good items. But uh, this game sometimes, uh, yeah. So I, like I said, my team will try their best, but. The three-star Karma just blows up everything so quickly. And they managed to hit two-star, you know, managed to two-star everything on their board. And I was like, oh, Kale, come on, Kale. But, oh, I need her to get off a few more attacks. Come on. No, not enough. And that is a very disappointing end to the game because I felt like I had just built a really, really good team, a really strong team that would almost always win. But I guess that person just high rolled to an absolutely disgusting degree. Still, it's one of the reasons why this set is frustrating to me. I just like, there's so much power in the stuff that's on the carousels and the stuff that pops up in the armories. It's like, if you get the right armory items, if you get emblems that you need off carousels, it just makes such a huge difference. And it's so RNG based. It's just frustrating for that to happen. So one of the things I don't like about this set, I don't like how much RNG there is in all this stuff. It feels like it's out of your control and it doesn't feel good when it goes against you. Well, anyway, chance to look at Kale. Hope you still enjoyed this video. Until next time, have a great week, and I'll see you guys soon.